Greetings, cats and kittens. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back to Libby's Lullabies. Today, I'm going to be reading The Magic Brush, a story of love, family, and Chinese characters, written by Kat Ye and illustrated by Hui Bwan Lee. So I want you guys to sit back or lie down. Either way, enjoy the story. A gong was Jasmine and Tai Tai's grandfather from a faraway land. One spring, he came to live with their family. He could fold rice paper into 100 fluttering birds. He could peel an orange in one long, curling, swirling peel. And he could name every tree and flower and insect in the garden. That is very impressive. Jasmine was a big girl. Too big to take afternoon naps anymore. Too big to feel sad in the empty playroom day after day while her little brother slept. But one day, the playroom wasn't empty. Come with me, Jasmine, a gong said. I think you're ready. For what? She asked. A gong smiled. Magic. Wide-eyed. Jasmine followed him into the room. First, Agong said, you must make a wish. Jasmine paused, then whispered shyly in his ear. Agong nodded. He poured a little clear water into the inkstone, mixing it until it was the deep color of night. Then he put his hand over Jasmine's and together they dipped the brush and touched it to paper. Once there was a girl named Jasmine who could fly as high as the moon and the stars, a gong said. And where shall she go, this flying Jasmine, he asked, to rescue a baby dragon that lives at the top of the highest mountain past a dark forest and a terrible rolling river. And what of this river? Shall we wish for a boat to sail across? Well, if you're not afraid of a little water, Agong, I think I'd rather wish for a fish. Oh no, it's the dark forest. Look at all the eyes. Perhaps, if you wish for a flame for our lantern, you will see that things are not always as they seem. Monkeys! <laughs> I love having monkey friends, Agong. And see, they have brought us to a wishing fountain. Here is a coin. What shall you wish for now? A basket of moon cakes, lychee, bubble tea, bao bean, and candy for our dragon. This is not too much to carry up the mountain? Not if my last wish is a horse that can fly. <laughs> Love it. A gong. I am going to feed my dragon and take care of her. And can we come again tomorrow and every day? Jasmine asked. A gong looked up from his papers. Yes, Jasmine, we can come every day. Shall we bring Tai Tai too? Mm, oh. No, he still needs his afternoon nap, so just you and me, okay? A gong smiled and bowed. Jasmine bowed back. All of that spring, they climbed mountains. All through the summer, they flew past the moon. And a gong said that soon, Jasmine would have a brush of her own. 
But in the fall, a gong became ill. He was ill for a very long time. And then he was gone. There was no more magic and no one to make wishes come true. Jasmine was a big girl, too big to want her afternoon naps again, too big to sit and wait alone day after day when she knew a gong was never coming back. But one day, Jasmine wasn't alone. Tai Tai had snuck away from his nap to find her. Too big for a nap, he insisted, but he hesitated, unsure, outside a gong's door. Jasmine looked at her little brother for a long time. Come here, Tai Tai, she finally whispered. I think you are ready. For what? He whispered back. Jasmine smiled, a small crooked smile. Magic. Wide-eyed, Tai Tai came into a gong's room. Jasmine poured a bit of clear water into the inkstone, mixing it until it was the cool color of evening sky. Then, taking a soft breath, she picked up a gong's brush with her hand over Tai Tai's little one, together, they made a wish. And it was just as their grandfather had said. Hmm. Magic. Wasn't that sweet? See, we learn things from our grandparents and then we can pass it on to our younger siblings. It's one big circle. I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day or your evening, your week or your weekend. And I will see you next time on Libby's Lullabies. Cheers. <laughs>